Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and this is the John Deaton for Senate QR code. All you gotta do is put your camera up to that with your phone and you can donate crypto to John Deaton um, in his quest to defeat and, and uh, unseat Elizabeth Warren, which I think he's gonna do. I want to show you this, Coinbase has finally climbed back above its direct listing price for the first time in more than two years. I was talking to a friend who had bought Coinbase at the IPO and all of the, coin, or not all, but a lot of the Coinbase investors, the old school investors, I think they, they set the game up so that they could all dump out of it and they did pretty quickly. Um, and so, yeah, now he, he was telling me he was happy it's finally getting back to where it was. He held. Check this out. Bitcoin hit its a new all-time high, over 70,000 today. And this is not a good sign. Bit, Jim Cramer, Bitcoin just hit 70,000, flipping bullish right here, right now. This is the most bullish I've been on it in history. Bye, bye, bye. When everybody knows when Jim Cramer says buy, 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 that means sell, sell, sell. Hope that's not true this time. Crypto traders already appear to be shifting their attention elsewhere for higher returns after Bitcoin reaching an all time high. Folks, this is what happens. It happens every single time we have market surges in crypto. Everybody goes to Bitcoin, then they change their mind later and they or they don't change their mind, but they go into Bitcoin initially, and then eventually they're like, wait a minute, what are these other ones? And the money starts sifting down into alts, and because there's lower volume in the altcoins, a lot of times they surge more than Bitcoin did. Here's what the market looks like as of right now. We got 2.6 trillion in the market. Bitcoin's pulled back a little bit from that 70. We've got a 62 cent XRP. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a an interesting Friday. Speaking of interesting Fridays, Gary Gensler was on um, was on Yahoo Finance, which just by coincidence happens to be the same organization, Yahoo Finance, who did the Yahoo Finance Summit, where Bill Hinman gave his speech, and where Joseph Lubin got on stage right after the speech. Here's Gary, and remember. Gary did a whole video where he thought he was being cute and funny about staking and how that too is a security, but not where it involves Ethereum. It doesn't apply to Ethereum. China backed Ethereum. It does not apply. Does the ability to stake Ether change your perspective on whether an Ether ETP is a suitable product like a spot? Bitcoin ETP. Uh, again, I'm not going to speak to the specifics of filings in front of us. I understand the question. In general, though, can you talk? Not, not about Look, a specific I think, file. I think there's 15 to 20,000 of these crypto tokens. And for many of them, the investing public is looking for a better future based upon the efforts of others. And why do I say that? Think about it. Most of them, Jennifer, you can find an entrepreneur, a CEO, and actually interview her and sit down with the, the, the business leaders of that. You can find a website. You can find the investing public oftentimes, depending upon the facts, are investing their hard-earned funds into a investment contract is what the law would call it when you're investing in, in in something anticipating a profit based on the efforts of a group um and this is the law of the land that's the supreme court lays that out but do you view the issue i know you're talking about speculation and you've been worried about fraud and manipulation as it relates to bitcoin do you view that differently as it relates to ether at all 
I think the whole crypto field has challenges. Um, it, it's a, it's a whole, the whole field is rife with, with abuses and fraud. Look at the series of bankruptcy. You mean like JP Morgan, how many billions of dollars of fines have they paid over the years for fraud? In 22 and 23, when investors weren't getting the proper disclosures from the middle of the market, the intermediaries. And by the way, for the viewing public, this is not that decentralized. That's part of the uh, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto and the folklore of decentralization. Bill Hinman said that it was. But How in come he never invokes Bill Hinman? You ever notice that? Middle, there are intermediate. Remember, folks, everything Gary's doing, he has to dance around not suing Ethereum. To sue Ethereum is to expo expose the fraud and the corruption of the SEC where he is, and probably his part in it. He's got to figure out a way to get Ethereum to, to make it look like he did something without suing them. That's what I think. Uh, that are pulling together your hard-earned assets, not maybe not Jennifer's, but the hard-earned assets, and pulling them together and not giving you the proper disclosures. And they're doing things that we would never allow the New York Stock Exchange to do. They're trading against you. They're, they're commingling your funds. They're maybe lending your funds. You allow JP Morgan to do all kinds of things. Then the way it works is they might make a $2 billion profit and then you find them for 500 million. And then that's that. They don't have to go through a three year lawsuit like you've taken Ripple through, nothing. Out, they're operating as a, a clearing house, a broker, a dealer, an exchange. I think that puts the investing public at risk. People Does the ability to- People gotta go. Now, um, in, the, in my DAIXRP.com group, I laid the, um, I laid the Chinese anthem since he's protecting the CCP and he's backing only projects that are backed by the CCP while he goes after American companies. We, I, I laid the, the CCP national anthem over the top of his, him talking here and I'll, I'll play just a tad of that in the group when we get there. But first, here is Brad Chase from Ripple. One way to use those things well and, and kind of enable the inner value is interoperability between these assets. So at Ripple, this is why we have a product like Liquidity Hub, where you need a way to be able to exchange an asset from one type to another. When you have that interoperability layer, value can start moving, flowing freely. And so the same way that you saw this Cambrian explosion of the internet, you know, enabling new types of business, new types of capabilities, we'll see the same thing here. Ah, somebody's been talking to Chris Larson about Cambrian explosions. Now. This is uh, Anthony Scaramucci. I wanted to play this for you. J not the whole thing, it's too long. But listen to the first part of this. The, there's a standard in the United States as it relates to administrative law called arbitrary and capricious behavior by the administrator. And so the administrator in this case would be the SEC. And so uh, the DC circuit ruled in the Grayscale case that Gary Gensler and his team were quote unquote arbitrary and capricious in rejecting the Grayscale Bitcoin application. And so that was done knowing that they were arbitrary and capricious. Um, there's very smart people. Gary went to law school. He took administrative law. And so there's a bug in the system. And I believe the bug in the system is Elizabeth Warren. And to take you back to 2020, uh, Elizabeth Warren basically dropped out of the primary. And she basically cut a deal with the Biden administration to effectively be the president for financial services. And so she picked Janet Yellen. She picked Gary. And she hates this industry. Uh, in a way that you can't possibly imagine, and her minions are going to do everything they can to block things in this industry. So, masses to shake them out of the digital asset space and then give you guys insightful information via video clips from systemically important individuals that operate in the Web3 ecosystem via large organizations that are helping build this space. I thought that it was just Anthony Scaramucci talking. I didn't realize it, that that guy came in after that part. I was going to let you watch the Scaramucci part. But anyway, so um, we're going to go into DAIXRP.com. Here's what we're going to talk about. Um, first of all, I'm going to play you a little bit of that Gary with the Chinese anthem. That's always fun. Can't play that out here. But we're going to focus, I'm going to show you a video of something that's just been uncovered. 
I mean, these, these people running the show are about as corrupt as corrupt gets. And I'm going to show you that just to show you how bad it is. But then we're going to, we're going to go over what would happen, how would XRP potentially benefit if Ethereum was called a security? How might XRP benefit? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Here we go.